Hey friend, in this video, we are doing the part two to brush techniques when using watercolor. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint with a compound stroke. So in part one of brush techniques, I showed you how to do vertical hold and a slanted hold. In this one, we're gonna be doing one motion, two different techniques using a compound stroke. And we're gonna be painting a lot of leaves, at branches and leaves to show you how to get a smooth transition from pressure to release of pressure so you can create leaves. Compound strokes are used in a variety of different subjects like leaves, petals, animals even. So if you are ready to get better and develop that muscle memory using compound strokes, then let's dive in. We've also covered brush techniques with our circle piece and that has gotten us comfortable with vertical holds versus slanted holds. Now we're gonna combine, a ver combine our vertical and slanted hold together in one foul swoop for using a compound stroke. So a compound stroke just means we're gonna be using a vertical and a slanted hold. Along with that, with our vertical hold, we're gonna be using, uh, and slanted, or slanted hold, we're gonna be using pressure and release of pressure. So it's a compound stroke because we're doing multiple things in one stroke without lifting our brush. And to practice this, um, we're gonna be painting leaves. So I'm gonna be using my size six brush and um, I'm gonna show you how to paint some leaves individually by themselves first. First, and I'm gonna grab some water on my brush and sap green so you can see, cause we're obviously painting leaves, but compound strokes don't just happen with leaves. There's, this is just a good example. So to paint a leaf, you wanna point your brush handle the same direction the point of the leaf is gonna point. So if my leaf is gonna point this way, the handle of my brush is going to be literally pointing the same direction. If my leaf is gonna point down at me, then I'm gonna point my brush down at me as well. I'm not gonna be using the side of the brush to paint the leaf. That's gonna look very differently. I'm gonna be using the tip of the brush to flow through this compound stroke. So it'll make more sense once you start practicing it. And just as a disclaimer, before you actually start painting leaves, leaves are tricky because they are co compound strokes. So this is something to always be practicing and to do it over and over again is this compound stroke because this is what's really going to make you very comfortable with, with brushes and getting into that flow state and just kind of painting is practicing compound strokes. So for my leaf, I'm holding my brush at in between a slanted and a vertical hold. So I'm right about 45 ish degree angle away from my paper. And I'm going to start with just a little stem because a floating leaf looks a little weird, but this is with little to no pressure. I'm just adding a little stem. That's not a part of the compound stroke. It's just so the leaf doesn't look like a floating taco. <laughs> Uh, so I got a little stem and at 45 degrees, holding my brush at 45 degrees, I am going to, at the top of this part, apply pressure and drag my brush in a straight line. And as I do so, I'm going to gradually release that pressure and get really, really thin. So this is a very fine point with your round brushes. And I'm gonna finish this leaf, but then I'm gonna show you what a lot of beginners do when they're painting their leaves is they don't get thin enough at the end. So we did pressure, which the fanning of the brush is what creates the width of the leaf. And then you gradually release that pressure. So it gets really, really thin for the tip of the leaf. So that's one side. And then the other side, you're doing the same thing. We're starting at the same exact spot. We're just kind of curving down with pressure and gradually releasing at the same spot, like so. So a lot of beginners when they're first painting leaves will um, go too quickly. They'll apply pressure and then just flick and you get this weird texture at the top. Or they will be really intimidated. It can go very, very slow. So they're pressure, 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 pressure. And then they just kind of lift it and it gives this like rounded leaf, which is cute, but it's not what we're going for. So if you want a compound stroke leaf, you're gonna start with a thin stroke. This is not the compound stroke, but this is just the base of the leaf with the little stem. 45 degree angle with your brush, making sure your brush handle is pointing the same direction your leaf is pointing and just dragging your arm across in a straight line with pressure and gradually releasing that pressure to get thin. So when I put pressure on my brush, my brush kind of flips up into a, a straight up vert vertical hold. So pressure, and gradually release. You're not, a lot of beginners will do this too. You're not curving your brush. 
like this, because then you would have to color it in. That's just a, it's not a, not a compound stroke anymore because you have to color it in. So, so 45 degree angle hold away from the paper, pressure, drag, gradually release as you're dragging, get as thin as you can, start at the same spot, pressure, drag, gradually release. Let's do a few more so you can see it up close and then we're gonna create a full branch. So 45 degree angle hold. Let's say I want my leaf to point up and down. So my handle of my brush is gonna point up wherever my leaf is gonna point. Pressure, gradually release. See how thin you can get? Pressure. Gradually release. Now let's do a leaf pointing straight across this way. So instead of angling my brush this, this way or this way, I'm angling straight across. Pressure, gradually release. See how I'm going in a straight line too. I'm not curving up or down. The pressure is making my leaf fat. Release. Let's go this way. Pressure. Release. Pressure. Release. If you're struggling with this stroke, maybe the leaf is over too soon or you're working through it too quickly, you can also practice longer leaves like tulip leaves. So I'm doing the same thin stroke, whatever direction the leaf is pointing. And then I'm just dragging it out for a longer period of time maybe curving with it and gradually releasing pressure. So that could be like a tulip leaf. But this compound stroke I use in leaves all the time. But if I want to show fold in leaves, um, I'll do pressure, release, pressure again, then release. But compound strokes are used all of the time in brush lettering. So all your downstrokes in your letters are going to be pressure, so they're wide. And then all your upstrokes or across strokes are going to be thin. Um, you'll use this technique if you're painting some petals. I'll use compound strokes. So it's used all the time and it's such a great thing to practice. But I guarantee you if this is your first time painting leaves like this, you're going to be frustrated and uh, maybe feel like giving up, but please don't. It takes a while, it takes some patience to really get that muscle memory. So do a few rows of these leaves by themselves. And next I'm going to show you how to combine these leaves on a branch. So I'm gonna paint a few different branches. And if I were painting a full floral piece or maybe a wreath with just leaves in it, uh, this is kind of how I would create color balance and whatnot with my leaves. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to combine your leaves on an actual branch uh, for your leaves. So a few different um, colorways, but this is kind of my approach. So I'm gonna do, for my stem, I'm gonna do some burnt umber with a touch of Mars Black in it for a smokier brown instead of more of like a chocolatey brown. And I'm using my size six brush for stems, I'm gonna use a vertical hold. You don't have to go straight up and down. I'm gonna use like a 80-ish degree angle away from my paper. And I'm pivoting from my elbow. So my elbow is resting on the table and I am using little to no pressure on my stem to create a C curve. A lot of people do S curves or they put pressure put pressure on their C curve for their branch and it looks like an eyebrow. Or if you do an S curve, it just kind of looks like a worm. So I'm doing a C curve for my stem and I'm gonna make the base of my stem just a little bit thicker. And then we're gonna go leaf by leaf with adding our secondary stem. So I've got still this brown color and we're just gonna pull out C curves. I'm not going to curve in towards the stem because that's going to make it look like a saguaro cactus, but I'm curving out from the stem and I'm going to add some darker, smokier greens with 
a touch of brown and sap green and maybe a touch of Mars black for some of them, some lighter leaves. I'm just going to whatever direction the stem is pointing is the direction my leaf should be pointing. If I put a leaf here, it's gonna look like someone snapped it off. So we want the stem to be growing into our leaf. So our handle of our brush is pointing in line with that. And we're doing the same thing, compound stroke pressure, release, pressure, release. And as I'm going up this main stem, whoops, I'm going leaf by leaf with my secondary stems and kind of staggering on either side. So maybe this next one, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my mixture. Making sure to point the handle of my brush in line with that stem. So now I wanna create balance with this blue-green color. I don't want it to be green over here, blue-green over here. So I'm gonna add a blue-green leaf here, but maybe it's a lighter value. So I'm gonna grab this pigment with my brush and just rinse it off with some water for a lighter value. Pressure release. And I love when leaves with this loose style painting overlap and start to bleed into each other like this. If you're noticing a little puddle on your leaves, just soak it up with a dry brush or a paper towel, because that's gonna create a wonky hard line. Next, I'm gonna do some sap green and yellow green. I'm just staggering my colors and my values so that it's creating balance and it doesn't feel like it's tipping in one direction or another. It's just creating depth and balance because some leaves are gonna be overlapped. Some leaves are gonna be hitting light and others will be more shaded. And you can even add leaves that are Gonna overlap. Let's do more of that blue green. Since it's on the left, let's pull it over here a little bit more. Darker blue green. Overlap. Maybe just sap green by itself for this one. And it's kind of overlapping that middle stem. So with every leaf, I'm switching up the hue slightly, creating balance across the whole stem with hue and value. And let's do some more yellow green. And practicing these leaves on a single stem over and over like this is developing that muscle memory. So even if it's looking wonky to you, just keep doing it until you finish the whole stem because you're practicing muscle memory with this compound stroke and it's not easy. Another thing that I wanna to mention too with stems when you're doing a full stem like this is a lot of people will bring their secondary stems really long and their leaf will be way over here and that's gonna create a big gap between your main stem and your secondary stem and it's just gonna feel really empty and weird. So I'm going really close to the main stem. I'm only going like a quarter of an inch out. And I can always add more leaves in between some of these if I want to, if their gap is feeling a little too spaced out. But going between a mixture of sap green, Prussian blue, Mars black and burnt umber, or sap green and yellow, lemon yellow deep. And mixing up values. I'm gonna add in some more leaves that are lighter kind of poking through maybe here and here. Let's 
so lighter value leaves, but making sure I'm dabbing the excess water off on my paper towel so I'm not using too much water that will make a puddle. So everything I've covered in this watercolor basics video so far, we're combining for this big stem with all these leaves. So compound strokes, wet and wet painting. We've got some blending happening between the stem and the leaves and neighboring leaves. Um, we could go back on top of these leaves once they dry and add vein details if we wanted to using wet and dry. We're using vertical and slanted holds all of the things. So these are great, leaves are a great thing to be practicing over and over again, because you practice so much. Pressure release, maybe half a leaf poking up here, like so. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was just one part of our complete beginner's guide to watercolor. So make sure you go check out that master video. It's got all the goods in it. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next tutorial.